Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. We have a massive bombshell about Kamala Harris's running mate, Tim Walls, all right? He just got exposed big time. And now sources are out actually coming out and saying that he is hurting the Kamala Harris campaign. And what he just did today just revealed everything. Okay, the truth about Tim Walls, about his wife, Gwen Walls, and about Kamala Harris is all coming out. This is catastrophic, probably the most monumentally catastrophic thing that happened for Kamala Harris, all right? I don't see a way out of this for Tim Waltz anymore. I mean, this dude, this man, he just made such a large mistake and also... He is now uh, basically getting caught in this, uh, well, he's being accused of this new scandal, which we will touch on. He is facing a new set of allegations, which we will be discussing. Um, and Donald J. Trump and J.D. Vance and Joe Rogan, <laughs> they're all going out, out hard against Tim Waltz. And I think it's because a lot of people are... They're not dumb. A lot of people look at Tim Walsh and go, why in the world would we want that man leading our country with Kamala Harris, all right? Before we dive into this update with Tim Waltz, we're going to read the Bible because God comes first. Amen? All right, here we go. Today's Bible reading is from Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. Comment amen down below, my friends. I'm going to heart some of your guys' comments who leave an amen comment. And yeah, guys, we are just a couple weeks away from the election. Ooh, things are heating up big time, guys. But things are looking incredible for Trump. Really, really good for MAGA. I've been driving around. I just see Trump flags up all over my town. I mean, people are waking up. And I'm in California, all right? I don't know where you are. But if there's, if I see, I can't drive down the road without seeing Trump flags everywhere and I'm in California. <laughs> oh yeah, I think people are waking up and I think people are ready for MAGA, baby. All right, let's tune in. In a stunning mood, so today, uh, Tim Waltz and uh, Vice President Kamala Harris actually went to Pennsylvania. Tim Waltz just admitting one of the word, one of the wildest things ever. Look at this, my friends. This is insane. You all know it. We can't have four more years of this. We won't have four more years of it. We won't. He just said we won't have four more years of this. Does he not realize that Kamala Harris is in office right now? Well, hello, Green Bank. Good to see you all. They're not done. Project 2025 is going to restrict access to fertility treatments. They're going to be ripping those away. I know there's a... Why, why is he talking about Project 2025? Trump has said time and time again that he is not affiliated with that. Those you out there, if you've not been through the, the actual anguish of infertility, I guarantee you know somebody who has. This guy is super strange. I you to get out there, vote as early as you can, get out and bring people to the polls. I'm telling you, this thing is gonna be close because we're a divided country. It's gonna be close because they will do everything they can to try and suppress votes and make people feel like it doesn't matter. That's where you all come in. You're motivated enough to be here. You've got a voice to talk to your neighbors. You know you run into those people who say, oh, I'm just not that into politics. Too damn bad. Politics is into you. Go vote. Go vote. You got to see their famous bus in the background. Super, super strange, guys. Something's wrong with Tim Waltz. Let's listen. This is uh, Joe Rogan reacting to Kamala Harris choosing Tim Waltz. Yeah, well, they don't want it to be evil. They right. want it to have negative energy attached to it and the karma of killing a bunch of people. Right. Like, who wants Dick Cheney's soul? <laughs> You know, the alien's like, you have that dude. Remember when he shot someone and then the guy apologized yeah. to him? Isn't that nice? You know how gangster that is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you shoot a guy in the face and the dude's like, yeah, I look like a bird. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I yeah. look like a dude. Can you, what is with, is there any way to you that we're not being gaslit like to hell by, Cam, by Kamala Harris? In what way? Like, wasn't she like a joke even among Democrats? Uh-huh. Like, 10 seconds ago, like literally, sure. like a day ago. Yep. And now it's like the country's rallying around. I know. Like, yeah. What? 
I don't know. I don't even. Yeah, we're, we're so easily manipulated, and they're all doing it in lockstep. Yeah, no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. She was, uh, she polled as the least popular vice president of all time. Yeah. Um, she is, you know, I had dinner with a friend of mine recently who actually knows her. He says she's very smart. But when she gets in front of a camera, she locks up, and she's just not good at <laughs> communicating. And she tries to go off script, and she, you know... Whenever you're talking in front of a large group of people, um, there's a bizarre s stress and pressure that really constricts your ability to communicate. I'm aware. Yeah. As of the last few minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. And this is just you and me, right? This right. is just you and me. And now imagine you and me, but we're in front of 15,000 people that are hanging on our every word and you're kind of free balling and maybe you really haven't even done the research. Like someone's asking how you're gonna fix the economy, <laughs> you're right? And then you have some not, well, the problem is everybody needs money for kiss the bills and we're working on that. Like what? Well, you can, that's so obvious when, you know, the, the passage of time is significant mm, and the significance yeah. of the passage of time is significant because of the passage of time. Exactly. Yeah. So that's someone who is basically like a, a kid in the fifth grade who's writing a book report, but they haven't read the book. That's every time I see her on camera, that's all I, I mean, can. Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz leading this nation. I mean, you guys know that Tim Waltz, and especially with the economy, he has no investments. You guys are aware of this, right? Tim Waltz has no stocks, no bonds, and doesn't own a home. So how are we trusting this guy to fix our economy when he doesn't even have a retirement account? He has no stocks, no bonds, and doesn't own a home. I mean, what is going on? Tim Waltz's personal finances are something of an anomaly in presidential politics. He has no investments, no bonds, no stock holdings, no real estate, and he does not currently own a home. It's like, okay, there's nothing wrong with, with being a... Look at this guy. Who in their right mind likes this guy? It's like, I don't... You know, nothing's wrong with renting. But it's like, when you start saying, like, you, you don't have any stocks, you don't have a retirement account, and then you also don't own a house... I mean, what's, what's going on here? He, oh, he's just a regular dude. He's just a knucklehead. But remember that, guys. He's just a knucklehead, right? Commitment, whether it be through teaching, which I was good at, or whether it was being a good soldier or was being a good member of Congress, those are the things that I think are the values that people care about. Governor, just to follow up on that, th the question was, can you explain the no, discrepancy? Just, all I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this. So I, I will just, that's what I've said. So I was in Hong Kong and China during the democracy protests went in. And from that, I learned a lot of what needed to be in, in governance. He's just a knucklehead. Remember that, guys. He's just a knucklehead. Here's Donald J. Trump exposing the truth about Tim Waltz. Let's tune in. Our country is being destroyed by these lunatics. And while you're at it, get as many other Trump supporters as you can, and they'll do the same. 33 days from now, we are going to win the state of Michigan. Yeah. We're going to defeat Lion Kamala Harris, one of the worst candidates ever. Lying, like lion, not like lion tiger, but lion, like liar. Never. You're fired, Kamala. And how about the vice president? That's going to be president someday? I don't think so. I don't think so. Did you see the debate? I don't think that's going to be president. He called himself knucklehead. We don't want a knucklehead as a president. And we're going to make America great again. Yeah. Comment MAGA down below, guys. And I'm asking every citizen all across our land to join me in launching a new golden age for America. As catastrophic as Kamala Harris. You know, I never use the name Harris. Nobody knows what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> I say, you know, Harris is doing a lousy job. Who's Harris? <laughs> we usually just say Lion Kamala. It's much better, more accurate. <laughs> But as bad as 
Kamala's failures have been, we have a plan to fix it, and we're going to fix it very fast. It's going to go very quickly. Can you imagine what she's doing to our country on the borders, though? Can you imagine? With everything else is bad. Can you imagine what they're doing? Why? Why are they doing it there? Crazy. Absolutely crazy. And then Tim Waltz was roasted over appearing to struggle to load shotgun at a hunting event. Did you guys see this? It's like they just spent all this time criticizing and putting down and talking crap about the average American, you know, dude, uh, you know, the average American who's into this and that, um, outdoor, whatever. And then they try to throw Tim Waltz in, into this to load a shotgun. You got Kamala Harris drinking a beer on Stephen Colbert. It's like, what are, where, who are they trying to appeal to? That was beautiful. Every vice president joke ever made was about to be made right there. So you know it. And I was just like this. Somebody noted that his, his uh, shirt that he's wearing, or his gear, looks like it was never used before. Turn it into a feather pillow? Oh, yeah. Like it looks like completely unused. So, because it was right early the first opener, and I'm like, oh, I want to shoot. I actually haven't watched this yet, so this will be interesting. And it never fits quite right. It never fits quite right. It's not quite right. How do you give it back? Governor, what kind of gun is this? This is a Beretta A400. I brought, I bought it when I was shooting a lot of uh, trap because it has a kind of their patented thing that kick off. What? There are no words. Joining us now is journalist and commentator Brad Palumbo. Brad, thanks for your time. This guy boasts about his extensive military experience, but he handles a gun like it's a foreign object that just fell from outer space. <laughs> Sky News is so funny. Yeah, some people were saying that, well, it's probably a good thing that Tim Waltz actually, you know, retired before his, um, his group went off to combat because of the way that he's handling a shotgun there. I don't know that, I, I, I'm not sure I believe that he's ever touched a gun before in his life. I mean, I'm sure he has, but he looked so uncomfortable and the whole thing is so fake and so staged. I just can't help but feel like the Harris Waltz campaign is just pandering to men in the most cheesy and cringeworthy way imaginable. Oh, well, we need this Midwestern guy to, Go on a hunt and stage a little photo shoot because though that's what men like. No, I mean, the reason they're struggling with male voters is so much bigger than that. It's because the Democratic Party has spent years at this point just throwing men under the bus and stigmatizing masculinity and pushing ridiculous arguments like believing all women no matter what and so many other things that have isolated male voters Putting Tim Walls in a cringeworthy and stilted hunting photo shoot is not going to help these people because they don't even know why they're in trouble with male voters in the first place. Yeah, and they, I mean, people also, like male voters, they look up to this guy to tr and, and Trump. They look up to J.D. Vance and they look up to Trump. Look at J.D. Vance absolutely obliterate Tim Waltz. Let's tune in. Well, I want to thank Governor Waltz, uh, you, you folks at CBS, and of course the American people for tuning in this evening. And one of the issues we didn't talk about was energy. And I remember when I was being raised by my grandmother, when she didn't have enough money to turn on the heat some nights because Ohio gets pretty cold at night and because money was often very tight. And I believe, as a person who wants to be your next vice president, that we are a rich and prosperous enough country where every American, whether they're rich or poor, ought to be able to turn on their heat in the middle of a cold winter night. That's gotten more difficult, thanks to Kamala Harris's energy policies. I believe that whether you're rich or poor, you ought to be able to afford a nice meal for your family. That's gotten harder because of Kamala Harris's policies. I believe that whether you're rich or poor, you ought to be able to afford to buy a house. You ought to be able to live in safe neighborhoods. You ought to not have your communities flooded with fentanyl. And that too has gotten harder with Kamala because of Kamala Harris's policies. Now I've been in politics long enough to do what Kamala Harris does when she stands before the American people and says that on day one, she's gonna work on all these challenges I just listed. 
She's been the vice president for three and a half years. Day one was 1,400 days ago, and her policies have made these problems worse. Now, I believe that we have the most beautiful country in the world. I meet people on the campaign trail who can't afford food, but have the grace and generosity to ask me how I'm doing and to tell me they're praying for my family. What that has taught me is that we have the greatest country, the most beautiful country, the most incredible people anywhere in the world, but they're not going to be able to achieve their full dreams with the broken leadership that we have in Washington. They're not going to be able to live their American dream if we do the same thing that we've been doing for the last three and a half years. We need change. We need a new direction. We need a president who has already done this once before and did it well. Please vote for Donald Trump. And whether you vote for me or vote for Tim Walz, I just want to say I'm so proud to be doing this and I'm rooting for you. God bless you and good night. Wow. So that's what people are looking up to. They're not looking up to Tim Waltz. Look at Tim Walt. I mean, this dude, he cracks under pressure. Tim Walt, uh, J.D. Vance looks incredibly composed. Watch this. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a, she damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Has she A damning, why does he keep saying damn? Like, it's, dude, like... Speak pro properly, dude. It's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Obviously, Donald Trump and I think that there were problems in 2020. We've talked about it. I'm happy to talk about it further. But you guys attack us for not believing in democracy. The most sacred right under the United States democracy is the First Amendment. You yourself have said there's no First Amendment right to misinformation. Now, let's keep listening to Joe Rogan uh, talk about Tim Waltz. I can think is that she's the kid who didn't do her own work. Right. Because she just has that vibe. Did you see the clip of her talking about how, how dare we wish Merry Christmas to people? No. Yeah, she she does this bizarre like rant about how we shouldn't be wishing Merry Christmas to anyone. Is this when she was a senator? I don't know. It's recent. It's recent. Yeah. It's, Real. it's, it's so strange that like that was her like that's the only time I've seen her passionate about anything on camera. Come on, really? Yeah, was, oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I've seen the one she's telling that people need to be woke. Everyone needs to be more woke. Oh, you should be more woke. You should figure out who's the wokest. You try to be the wokest, but she's whatever. Everyone should be more woke. And she's like laughing. It's like what the fuck. And when we all sing happy tunes and sing Merry Christmas and wish each other Merry Christmas, these children are not going to have a Merry Christmas. How dare we speak Merry Christmas? How dare we? Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and she invoked Greta Thunberg a little bit there. These people are so stupid. So he takes out the mention to what this is. You know, one is um, abortion up at the vice president. They had no primaries for Joe Biden. And now all of a sudden she is the nominee because he's stepping away. And so then they bring in her and they bring in this other guy who's radical from Minnesota. That's the vice president who um, oh, he, he believes a lot of wild things. Uh, one of them is transgender surgery for people who are under 13. Um, another one is um, abortion up until nine months. Ooh. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's reasons why people medically would like if the woman's life is in danger if the child has something wrong it's not going to live there's there's reasons why they choose to do things like that but that stuff scares the fuck out of people he changed the minnesota state flag to make it look like a somali flag yeah oh you haven't seen that no yeah Sh show that video i haven't even heard of half this stuff this is weird somali flag so the video of him taking down the Minnesota flag and he replaced it with the new flag that looks a lot like the Somali flag. Wow. Minnesota has a huge um, population of Somalis in it. Well, isn't What's-Her-Face? Uh, yes. Yeah. Omar. Yeah. Oh. But there's a video of him doing it. Man. Well, okay, well, let's see the video. But they did change the Minnesota state flag, correct? Sometimes the false... The yeah, thing. that's the problem with like fact checkers. Some of these fact checkers are completely full of shit. They, like you're just trying to debunk something, especially now when there's all this scrutiny being paid attention to what this guy. So uh, Joe Rogan's assistant 
or his producer Jamie is saying that that was um, inaccurate. Tim Walt's flag changed. Did you guys hear about this? Um, Reuters fact check Minnesota flag redesign inspired by state specific symbols. Um, false. Yeah, I, I'm not really. I'm not really sure, but whatever. That's done. Yeah. What have you? Uh, what's the the false stuff, Jamie? It's not the flag itself, correct? Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I typed in. I'm just trying to even get to it. A whole bunch of stories are popping up. I'll just show you this. Like, no, he didn't give him a Somali flag. No, he didn't change. No, it resembles Somali. False Somali. But what does it look? Like, okay, but what does it look like now? I was trying to get to. Okay, on the left is Somali flag. On the right is the Minnesota state flag. Okay, same color as the Somali flag. A white star. A different white star in it, like the Somali flag. Very different than the original Minnesota flag. And there's the video down below that. That's when he changes it out. So he takes out the Minnesota state flag. Oh, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Turn the volume up, please. So you hear him say that? All right, ready. Whoa, wait a minute. He gets the flag, picks it up, moves it out of the way, and replaces it. What, what's the new flag? I, I don't, why, why is he putting in a new flag? There, that's better. I mean, so why, wait, why did he change the state flag? I, I, I still am, like, confused. Like, he just changed the flag? He ditched? He did? I, I don't get it. Yes, why is it better? I don't know. Why, why do you care what the flag looks like, first of all? And why do you get to change the flag? How crazy is that the governor gets to change the flag? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that's just weird in and of itself. Like, who cares what it resembles? Just strange that the gut like if Governor Gavin Newsom was like, yeah, we're changing the flag. I'd be like, hell, what? Like, why? Like, who else is involved in that decision to change the flag? Is that what happened? I don't know. Usually, it's a big, it's a big event. They let people pick, you know. Yeah. You know, we have a bunch of people. That's a high population of Somalis in your state. I would imagine they would want to try to get that flag a little closer to home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's also um, Tim Waltz's wife that is getting a lot of heat for her post too. Tim Waltz's wife, Gwen Waltz, watch this. She sends a cringy message to voters and people on social media are not liking this. I'm Gwen Waltz and I have been an educator for a really long time and I'm here with an assignment for you today. It's due on November 5th. Now I'm gonna put my teacher classes on because this is really serious, like a final, and there's no late work. I need you to take yourself and three friends to the ballot box and make your voice heard. You have to vote. I'm gonna repeat that again. You and three of your friends have to make your voices heard by voting. If you need more information, just go to IWillVote.com. And remember, no late work. This is very cringe. And you know their whole viral, oh, turn the page, turn the page, look at this. How specifically do you turn the page, that's the case you're making about turning the page, on an administration uh, that A, Vice President Harris is a part of, <laughs> and that B, as recently as this week, she has been reluctant to criticize or say she would change anything about? Yeah, well, I think keeping in mind, the big difference here and the choice is going to be the difference between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, they keep saying... Turn the page, turn the page. But, I mean, it's just so strange. What is that, this whole turning the page routine? I mean, this is getting creepy now. We are turning the page. Did you see her do that? Yeah. Can you do it with me? We are turning the page on Donald Trump. Yep. We are turning the page on Project 2025. And we are turning the page. Trump has said he's not even a part of the tw Project 2025. To a new way forward, forward to a future where everyone can live. Well, this turn the page stuff is super weird. Have you guys seen this? Um, if you're watching this at night, I do apologize because you may have nightmares. But I kind of liked it when she did this. Turn the page. You like that? Okay. You like that? This, this is creepy. <laughs> so I need you to be with me and practice with me. What are we going to do? We're going to turn the page. Oh, pretty good. Do it again. We're going to turn the page. Yeah, but Trump and J.D. Vance, they're the weird ones. Not, the, not these guys. These guys are normal. And we're going to turn the page. All right, so I'm going to be watching you because when I see Wisconsin and I'm 
Look at her eyes. She's got like crazy eyes. I'm watching National Land TV because it's a pretty important place in Minnesota. I'll help you practice with this. You just show me this. Turn the page. The people on, on, this, on the crowd are so like strange. It makes me lose faith in humanity. Right? Turn the page. Like this guy up here, he's like, oh, okay, what? It's like, why are they doing? What's going on? And you know what else that looks like? Could you imagine if Usha, J.D. Vance's wife, went up on stage and did this? Usha is so classy. A lot of people, uh, you know, they don't, don't know too much about her. But Usha uh, Vance, like she's, why is it like that the Republican <laughs> leaders are so classy and respectful? And why is it that like the liberal ones are like just freaking bizarro world? Like, could you imagine Melania Trump doing this? Like, Melania Trump taking the, taking the mic from, like, look at her. Oh, turn the page, guys. For Halloween, <laughs> any woman out there dressing up as uh, Gwen Waltz, I'm sorry. That would be such an epic costume. Um, this is uh, Donald Trump making fun of Tim Waltz, let's watch this, guys. Right here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we don't need lectures on the economy from a candidate pushing communist price controls. Kamala has no idea what the hell she's doing. Her father is a Marxist professor, and I believe he taught her well. You know he's a Marxist professor. Can you imagine? Does anyone know that? I wonder if they knew that when they did an overthrow or a coup on... Joe Biden. I wonder if they knew where she comes from, where she came from, what her ideology is, but you could see it a little bit by this whack job. You know, he said, we're weird. That JD and I are weird. I think we're extremely normal people. We're like you, exactly like, he's weird. Did you ever see him go on the stage and go like crazy? It's like, he between his movement and her laugh, there's a lot of craziness. I'd say a step further than weird. Weird is a nice word by comparison. It is, <laughs> it is but it's, I mean, Donald Trump is not exaggerating. His, uh, when you see Tim Waltz walk out on stage, I mean, it's, it's super, this is, Tim Waltz hovers over the cashier's tablet while ordering a sandwich. This isn't normal behavior. We got a third of if you've ever worked in a restaurant, you would hate the type of person who looks over the counter like this. Like, give me some space. There's a reason why the iPad is faced that way. It's not for the customer to look at. You want a drink? Yeah. Who's this? <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, Tim Waltz is a real life version of wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Yeah, he's. <laughs> this, there's, that's not even the worst one. There's some really, really strange ones. Jazz hands Tim Waltz avoid reporters as he flamboyantly waves and perutes on the plane heading for New York. For the debate he's gonna lose. It is super strange though. There's so many so many weird weird clips of him. I'm like, I don't even have enough time. Oh yeah, this is Tim Waltz going in for a weird like bro hug handshake. What is going on? That guy, guy kind of does look, look, look like him. <laughs> oh, look at this. This is not the type of person I want running, leading our country, running our country.
Oh my gosh. What is going on? The, not the double, not everybody knows. Never do the double hand fists. <laughs> so weird. He always does the double hand wave. It's so strange. Look at him here. I mean, what is going on? Why is he acting like this? Like he's on the prices right or something. Like we, like could you, we need like leaders. Like, can you imagine this guy going in to walk into a meeting with Putin, with Xi Jinping? They'd be like, we need to talk like actual business. Like, we need leaders. <laughs> like, who walks around the room just doing double hand waves at everyone? What's this? I don't understand it at all. Um... He's getting these uh, new allegations. I don't know if you've seen this. Is Tim Waltz hurting Kamala Harris's campaign? Experts weigh in. Yeah, the school, he, he made these comments about the school shooting. Did you guys see this? I'm super passionate about this. The question come up about school shooting, we're talking about everything except school shooting. And I sat as a member of Congress with the Sandy Hook parents and it was a profound movement. David Hogg is a good friend of mine. You have seen me do this. I've talked about being people where there are school shooters, and uh, I need to be more specific on that, but I am, I am passionate about this. This one... I mean, for someone who misspeaks a lot, like, we should be, you know, promoting people and choosing people who are not misspeaking so much. The math behind why Harris picked Waltz and why she may regret it now. Is, is Kamala Harris regretting picking this guy? Tim Waltz is, is now, I mean, this is, this is like very, uh, this trending on social media a lot, if you guys go on social media. Tim Waltz is accused of inappropriate student relationship, visiting gay bar and viral tweet. Yeah, this, this went viral. Tim Waltz is facing a new set of allegations. Social media user who goes by DocNet YouTube is, uh, Saturday accused running mate of having an inappropriate relationship with a male student visiting a gay bar when he was a professor and football coach. Harris Waltz campaign is yet to issue a statement about the tweet, which is going viral on social media. Again, I'm, I don't want to dive too much into that because they haven't responded yet, and you guys can do your own research on this, but a lot of fishy stuff's coming out about, about this, um, not even to mention, you know, the whole, uh, you know, oh my gosh, there's, there's just so much. I mean, I could do a two, three, four hour long video on this, especially with his, his, his scandal with, uh, you know, him leaving, retiring right before going out, you know, the whole stolen valor scandal where he falsely claimed he carried weapons in war. I mean, we just have so much to cover or Tucker Carlson calling him a creep. I mean, we got to watch this. Then we'll end the video, guys. I want to be mean. I've already said I don't want to be mean, but like that, that Walls guy is a creep. I'm just telling you that as someone who went to boarding school in the 80s, like I know exactly who that guy is. And I'm, I'm sorry, it's just, I, you know, I hope I'm wrong. I don't think I am. And I mean, honestly, look, Tucker, why, why is he so obsessed with transing children, making it possible for them to se separate from their parents and have their body parts chopped off? Hello? Yeah, well, I lived in a boys' dorm in a New England boarding school in the 1980s with a lot of guys like Tim Walls, okay? So I, I saw that guy, and I'm like, oh, wow, I know exactly you're a creeper, as we used to call him, for sure. And <laughs> I love how, like, Tucker Carlson just, like, speaks his mind. Like, it's so refreshing to hear someone like Tucker. And, you know, I, I guess I probably shouldn't, I definitely shouldn't, S suggest what I'm suggesting with that evidence. I don't have evidence beyond what I've seen, so I just want to say that I'm probably again. Are you mean like a pervert? Like, I don't. Know, when you say creepy, like I just there's creepy, something like... wrong with that guy. He's... <laughs> Tucker's like he's speaking on behalf of like most people that I know. It's like there's something messed up. Like what's going on here? Weirdo. He's a weirdo, and you can tell watching him. And I'm sorry, I've just lived long enough that I know that your gut level perceptions are rooted in truth. They're not always precisely true. I've gotten many things wrong. Like it yeah, it's just a gut intuition feeling. And I think I have that too. I don't know about you, but the way I look at Tim Walsh, I just, I don't feel good when I look at him. And I don't know how people do. So, I mean, hopefully with the only positive out the, about this whole situation is that hopefully that reflects 
come November. And hopefully people are like, yeah, I don't want that guy. So anyways, big update with Tim Waltz today. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys.